Hi, this is Nancy Herald, and welcome to my show, High Road to Humanity. In every episode, I tell you powerful true stories filled with great wisdom that you can use in your own life as you strive for a higher road to travel. My featured guests will have their own unique stories to tell that enlighten your mind and your soul. So kick back, relax, and learn the secret to success when you take the high road. Hi, this is Nancy Yerald, and welcome to High Road to Humanity. And guess who's here today? Dr. Raymond Keller is back on the high road, and welcome back to High Road to Humanity. Thank you. It's always a pleasure to be on the higher road. I am so excited you're here, you guys. He is the expert on Venus. If you don't know who Dr. Keller is, they, it's AKA Cosmic Ray. He's a world recognized authority on the planet Venus and the author of seven international award-winning UFO books. So this is gonna be a fascinating show because today we're gonna to talk about why the space people are here. But let me tell you a little bit more about Raymond. You know, his two most recent books are Venus Rising Series, in the Venus Rising Series are Flying Saucers and the Venus Legacy that came out in 2021 and Flying Saucers. From Venus They Come, 2022. Uh, look, he's showing you, I love it. Both are published by Headline Books uh, of Terra Alta, West Virginia. Now, he serves as the USO consultant for the Paranormal Search Group headquarters in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. And he's been researching and writing about UFOs since 1967, probably since many of you are were before you guys were born. <laughs> he writes a weekly <laughs> column on the UFO phenomenon for Launch Tricklers, um, Phantoms and Monsters.com. That's so cool. And that's in McSherrystown, Pennsylvania. Um, Dr. Kelly grew up in Bedford, Ohio just so you guys know and um he's been doing this work he uh was in the navy um he was enlisted in the navy you just have a tremendous background you know it just goes on and his website is is it raymondkeller.com uh no it is um uh, rob potter's the promise revealed oh, okay the, i'm sorry uh the promise revealed.com and uh you could read many of my articles there and uh, find yeah. out about uh, uh, appearances uh, at uh, Mount Shasta. We have every year, we have a Venus conference on Mount Shasta. Uh, began with, um, in 2018, uh, with uh, myself and Omnek Onek. And uh, this year, we uh, this summer, was with uh, Laura Eisenhower up there. How was that? Oh, awesome. It was awesome. And uh, uh, they get bigger and bigger uh, every year. And, I'm going to have to come. Oh, oh, we'd be delighted to have you up there. Mount Shasta, beautiful Mount Shasta. There's been some fires, but they haven't touched uh, a Mount Shasta. So that's that. Yeah. That's good. And um, tell the audience, Laura Eisenhower, this is the granddaughter of our former president, Eisenhower. Yeah, yes, that that's right. Mm -hmm. uh, she has many things to reveal about the uh, nature of flying saucers and uh, what the government uh, knew about them from the 1950s and so forth. In fact, that was the subject of uh, my latest book, Flying Saucers um, from Venus, they, they Come. And she, once you got with you, once you had connection with her and she revealed more information is what prompted you to write that or what, Raymond? Oh, uh, well, I have my own uh, access to, uh, uh, to archives and I do my own historical research as a trained historian. Mm -hmm. I have a, uh, a doctoral degree in history. And um, so I researched all of the... Uh, uh, back engineering of flying saucers in the late 1940s and early 1950s, the various scientists that were contracted from around the world to work with the military and U.S. corporations in developing anti-gravity spaceships, what they call the G-ships, mm -hmm. the, the secret origins of the, um, of the space program. 
That's amazing. You know, you've got some slides you want to share with us today. We're doing the podcast, you guys, so we're going to break every 12 minutes or so. But um, Raymond has um, agreed, has come on, and what a wonderful um, uh, display for us to see. You're going to tell us why the space people are here. Yes, um, I put this together with um, uh, Genesee Roy from the uh, 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 Metaphysical Center in Aurora, Ohio. Okay. Um, it was presented in uh, um, Mount Shasta in 2019, and it's a beautiful, um, beautiful presentation based on um, the revelations that were given by the woman named Gloria Lee, who was a, a, a contactee uh, in the early days and the 1950s. Uh, she was also a pilot and a hostess at the uh, Los Angeles International uh, Airport. Okay. She realized um, that she was a Venusian after she came in contact with some uh, advanced beings from uh, uh, other planets in the solar system. Oh my that, God. that, that uh, she was returning to her power as a Venusian and she had traveled with the space people uh, on various missions. Uh, uh, one of them, which, of which is described in uh, Lady book, uh, the Lady Columba Venus Revelations. Yeah. Um, so this information um, comes from her um, and uh, ch channeled through Gloria Lee. Um, so we'll we'll go ahead and we'll start. I've got uh, we got about six minutes before we go to break. So you know, just so you kind of know, I've got share screen up there. So okay. Have at it, Raymond. All I'm right. So excited. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so the space people, why they are here. Is it is it up on the it is. Oh, oh, okay, great, great. Yeah. Okay, wow. now um the space people are here primarily to help us come into our power. We, we have uh, various powers that are latent within us beyond just the five that we know. Right. And th the most important thing though, before we could begin that journey to expand those powers within us or to activate them is to know ourselves. Yes. And the the, the uh, temple of uh, at, uh, uh, Delphos in ancient Greece, uh, that was written over the archway where you entered into there to, to know thyself. And uh, so this is the basis of, um, of modern Western philosophy. Mm -hmm. And um, I would say that um, this is still applicable today because um, the Venusians have told me that um, it's not so much important that we believe in them but that we believe in ourselves because right. then we'll realize that we're on an equal with our brothers and sisters of other planets. And then they'll welcome us into a confederation of planets into a membership there. Right. And I just want to interject really quickly. Know they self is the most important thing each of us can do. And it's going within. And this has been obviously, you know, projected to us for many years and we didn't take it seriously and now people are taking it seriously finally and going within so i will say that thank you nancy <laughs> <laughs> so they're also here to help us to make this world a a, a better place yeah. they they constantly have sent throughout the ages avatars and teachers some to be reincarnated among us into to human bodies and others travel directly here from other planets or, or higher dimensional planes to help us be the change that we want to see uh, in the world. So we can all start just doing stuff locally, even with our own families and our own communities, and then expand that uh, outward into an ever growing uh, circle of love. So this is the important uh, message in that aspect. Then what we want to do is to get in contact with our higher self. If we're going to activate um, uh, mental telepathy, 
uh, telekinesis, um, clairaudience, clairvoyance, uh, um, astral projection, and activate these kind of powers that we have within us, uh, we need the assistance of our, our higher self. Some refer to them as spirit guides or, or, or angel guides or saints, um, you know, depending on whatever religious tradition uh, you're in. But we need that spiritual power and to uh, and to access that, so we have to keep um, we have to keep an open heart uh, and a receptivity to those kind of uh, those kind of powers because they come from above, and uh, we don't generate them, but they come from above, and then we channel them through ourselves and uh, uh, use them for the benefit of uh, of humankind. Right, and I just want to say. Um... Before we got to go to break here in a second, but let me just um, wrap this up here by saying that I bring in the light every day. I teach the audience. I'm going to reiterate again, you guys bring in that light through your crown chakra down through your body, you know, ground yourself every day. This is how I get messages. This is how you get messages, right, Raymond? Yes, yes. And this is in conformity, actually, with the with the Bible. And when Paul is talking about um, um relying on the powers of heaven and bringing the powers of heaven down and spiritual gifts, nine spiritual gifts and, and, and so forth. Um, the Greeks in the new Testament time describe this process as kenosis. Right. So it's, it's pouring out from ourselves to help other, uh, other people on earth, but it's, it's power that comes from above, not, not generated that by us. Right. Well, we're just channels. We're just vehicles for me. Right. We're the vessel that it comes through. Hey, guys, right. we're, we're doing the podcast today. If you want to listen to the podcast, I'm on TogiNet Radio. We're on Apple um, Podcasts. We're on Spotify. I'm here today with Dr. Raymond Keller, and we're talking about the ETs, the extraterrestrials. This is Nancy Yearout. This is High Road to Humanity, and we will be right back. Here out, this is High Road to Humanity. I'm here today with Dr. Raymond Keller. We're talking about the extraterrestrials. Raymond, thank you so much for coming on and teaching us um, what we need to do in order to ascend. Um, continue on, please. Well, thank you. Thank you, Nancy. Uh, beside, um, beside Gloria Lee and, uh, and other, um, other contactees, I base a lot of my um, understanding from... Uh, um, the teachings of Annalise Skarin, who uh, who materialized and met with our group in 1987 on the slopes of Mount uh, of Mount Shasta. Talk that, about uh, it. Yeah. Um, well, um, we were um, uh, meeting with uh, uh, Clayton Parker, who is 87 years old, and uh, he he grew up with uh, Annalise Skarin from American Falls, Idaho. Okay. Born on the seventh day in the seventh month at the seventh hour uh, in uh, 1898. And um, so there was something special about her right from the start. But she went on to write nine books about how to get into heaven through the back door. In other words, that you don't have to die, that they'll just come down, uh, uh, angels and aliens, whatever you want to call them, that... Uh, these beings of, of light will come down and take you up with them. And you're, you're transformed in the twinkling of an eye. And that happened to her uh, in, in Mount Shasta and she materialized in the presence of many people uh, over the years to bring them illumination and knowledge about uh, what life is really like on the other planets and in the higher dimensions. Now, Raymond, it's time, I don't mean to interject on your presentation, but it feels like it's time for us to meet these um, other, you know, the extraterrestrials, but it's up to humanity to be of a different mindset. And so what, what the reason it's so important, and I just want to say this, that we all raise our vibration and connect is that we won't meet them, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, until we are ready, meaning we have learned self-love and, and that type of thing. Right. There, there are a significant number on Earth that are at that level, but until we 
uh, we have a greater mass consciousness and uh, awareness and application of these higher higher principles, um, there aren't going to be any mass landings. Any so it's up to us. Yes, it's up to it's up to us. You know, we 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 still have tensions throughout the nations, even with neighbor to neighbor, mm -hmm. uh, different ethnic groups within the same countries. Right. We have um, uh, the lack of a, a planetary energy grid. Um, we don't share the resources that we have with uh, other people that uh, are, need it. Are, are needful of them. And yeah. uh, there's still selfishness and uh, selfishness and, and greed. And uh, there's deception in high places. And they're not sharing the truth about flying saucers or UFOs. Uh, so the okay. information really isn't getting out. In the uh, 16th of January of 1949, when they released the findings of Project Sign, which was uh, one of the first UFO investigations, uh, then it was the, the newly created Air Force re released uh, that report. And they said, there's a definite technology behind this, but we're not ready to say it's extraterrestrial. And then on the 25th, 5th of June of 2021, when they had the congressional hearings about the Tic Tacs, right. the unidentified aerial phenomena or UAPs as they, they, they call them now, they said, well, there's a definite technology behind the UAPs, but we're not uh, ready to say that it's an extraterrestrial uh, technology. And we, we know that every time the space probes go to, uh, to other planets to the moon to to mars to venus and uh and beyond they're not really telling us all the facts about what they they really discover and uh so i've got you know the alternate opinions of other scientists and ufo experiencers all together in, in all my venus books right. and uh, they're all documented thoroughly and people can read these facts for for themselves no. and, Check them out because right. I have foot, footnotes there. I have questions. So there is a secret space program. Oh yes, def definitely. Most. And def how long has it been in going on? Uh, this has been going on since at least um, the late 1940s, and uh, it began when we be began to bring uh, scientists from uh, Germany over here to uh, work on atomic projects and rocketry and so forth and mm -hmm. advanced propulsion systems. Right. And, uh, and then later on, uh, um, scientists in the United States, uh, various scientists did um, papers at uh, from Babson College that sponsored the uh, uh, Gravity Research Foundation in New Boston, New Hampshire. And the, so I have all of the uh, all of the scientists and their papers and oh, how, wow. how they were gradually recruited by American corporations and what those corporations were, the projects that they were working on in these, in uh, like, uh, like Bell Labs, Hughes Aircraft, Electronics and Aerospace Companies, Martin, uh, this these different companies and uh, developing the G ships, uh, the anti-gravity ships, Mm -hmm. And uh, here's one that was, um, this is an artist conception that appeared of a black project, about a black project in science and mechanics uh, wow. magazine. Wow. In the and uh, Dr. Werner von Braun, an associate uh, um, physicist from Germany, uh, Dr. Stuhlinger were working together on that. And this information um, leaked out and I have the, the real story of the Avro disc. I was contracted with the Air Force to develop a flying saucer uh, with a Canadian corporation. Wow. This is me holding up a headline of a major Canadian newspaper uh, with the real flights. <laughs> What's it say? Well, it's, it's, it's uh, talking about the outstanding speed and maneuverability of this of this uh, G ship, and then the um, the Air Force 
American Air Force released this picture of this carnival ride thing. Oh was, my God. <laughs> yeah, it just goes a few feet off the ground and they said that was the Avro. That was it, huh? But I have the actual Canadian report and what people in Canada were reading about it versus what the Air Force was saying about it. So, so it's all here. It's, it's all documented and people could see for themselves that, right. uh, that there really is a secret space program. Well, and again, I have another question. So all this is going on and it all started in the 40s. Now, the Venetians were here then. I mean, did they try to intervene or, or, or what do they say about these times? And our, I guess, what do they say about our secret space program? You know, because they try to keep all of us in the dark, even though we all know, but they still don't tell us, you know, what, what do they say about this? Well, they've always had a contingent on Earth of about 4,000 operatives living and working among us in different uh, safe houses and so forth. Mm -hmm. But during the late 1940s, when we developed, started to develop rocketry and, um, and uh, atomic and nuclear power and, and nuclear weapons, then we, with the rocketry, we had the ability uh, to create delivery systems that could even possibly carry these weapons into outer space. Oh. Then, then the red light went off. You gotcha. Know, mm -hmm. a, a five uh, bell fire alarm was set off yeah. you know, on, the, on the other planets of our solar system and, and on the moon with the bases on the backside of the yeah, moon. Yeah, the crazy earthlings, right? <laughs> yes, uh, what are they up to? So they began to send their their people and their ships in greater numbers uh, increased their contingent to about 12,000. Wow. And, then, and the flying saucers were appearing like crazy everywhere in 1947 to 1952. Um, they were seen over military installations. And in 1952 in July, they were flying over in mass formation over the nation's capital. And um, because they, they're like, enough is enough, right? Yeah, yeah. And uh, what they were doing was um, they were releasing these green fireballs that was neutralizing the radiation from our atomic testing in the open air, in the, in the desert. Oh, my gosh. Both here and in Russia. And uh, so they, they neutralized enough radiation. That it would have been a lot worse. And maybe there would have been uh, mutations and so forth on the human race. So they did us a big favor working behind the scenes to do yeah, these things. Yeah, no, we only got like a minute before we got to go to break, but why didn't they stop Hiroshima? Uh, well, all of these were being done um, uh, in relative secret. And it wasn't until the, the bomb was actually detonated that they were alerted uh, to it. Okay. All right, you guys, we are, I'm here today with Dr. Raymond Keller. We're talking about the Venetians. We're talking about UFOs. We're talking about why they're here. And this is Nancy Uralt. This is High Road to Humanity, and we will be right back. Hi, this is Nancy Uralt. This is High Road to Humanity. I'm back here with Dr. Raymond Keller. Raymond has more slides for us. Please continue on. Thank you, Nancy. Uh, we'll go right to where I uh, uh, left off the last time. And um, that was with uh, the channeling of, uh, of higher powers and right. what the Venusians are teaching us and, and helping us with on many different uh, levels. And- um, What a blessing. I, I just wanted to say that, um, you know, we have this idea of anthropomorphism that everything should be, uh, should be like life on earth. But that's not uh, necessarily so. There's sentient life in many different, uh, many different forms on um, on many of the planets and on on Venus. The indigenous uh, life are a form of sentient bees. They're about uh, uh, five feet in diameter. They're very they're very large. They oh, wow. live underground and they share habitat with. Uh, uh, with humanoids that are not indigenous to Venus. They originally came from a planet called Norca in the Tau Ceti the star system. And okay. their, their planet um, was suffering through it uh, millions of years ago through a process of uh, turning into a vast desert, like on that movie uh, Dune. 
Mm -hmm. They had to evacuate their planet. Okay. So they, they built spaceships and they traveled through an ocean of stars to arrive at our solar system and, um, and set up uh, uh, bases on di different planets. Um, and they didn't want to interfere too much with Earth's evolution because they saw that, uh, well, at that, the time that they arrived, the most advanced form of life on Earth uh, were lemurs. Uh, but they knew that there was a potential in the evolutionary process for a human species. So um, um, they they largely settled on the other planets. I see. So I just want to say that uh, the Venusians are very uh, highly evolved. Uh, many have ascended beyond the third and fourth dimension into higher dimensions. So what we might refer to as the astral plane. And this is why uh, many aliens cannot be distinguished from, from angels because they're being, beings of light. Here you see uh, Howard and Connie Menger of uh, Highbridge, New Jersey. They're on there, they have an apple orchard and a farm and a, uh, they were contactees and um, uh, Howard Menger and, and his book, uh, From Outer Space to You, and Connie Menger in 1959. And then Connie Menger in the same year wrote a book called uh, My, My Saturnian Lover. Uh, Howard revealed that he was really Saul Dinaro, a teacher, an avatar sent to Earth from the Saturnian system. Wow. And, and uh, Connie was uh, uh, Marla of a uh, Venusian. She was a reincarnated uh, Venusian. And uh, to demonstrate that their, their true powers, they let them take a picture uh, of them. And you see right behind Howard is a manifestation of, uh, of his, his light essence. You know, it's kind of like cocoon. <laughs> you yeah. see the cocoon. So this is what this is what his true essence looks like as a being of light from from uh, the Saturnian system. His his form, his true form. His 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 true form. And then I have other pictures of him and Connie lighting up in the woods and in, in a basement at their at their home. And uh, they're all in my Venus books. And you know, people can read about Howard and Connie Menger and and other ETs that live among us. Right. So I put this this scripture here because you don't know, um, you know, who who they are. You might have a sense that this is a Venusian or this is an ET. Right. You don't, you don't really know. Right. I have uh, the same. Uh, I have the same scripture on my website because you don't know who I really am. <laughs> right. Right. Exactly. <laughs> and you know, if you're interested in this subject. If you're interested in metaphysical subjects and UFOs and exobiology, life on other planets, flying saucers, yeah. uh, psychic phenomena, all this stuff is is an indication that perhaps you are in your your last incarnation uh, here on the Earth before you return uh, home, and that's why you have this um, this wow. uh, intimate connection with these sub these subjects that makes sense thank you for saying that oh you're you oh you're 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 quite welcome this is a, a true awakening for for many people and of course in uh, in my first book uh venus rising uh which is just came out with the just came out with the venus uh german translation oh i know that's so awesome it's uh ostigende venus um uh Cosmic Connections and Friendship with Our Sister Planet is the name in the German. I love it. Okay, and we're going to go to the next one. So <clears throat> uh, it's said, often said that we have three eyes, uh, two to look and one to see. Uh. That this is referring to essentially the, the third eye, which isn't physically visible, but which allows for uh, the entrance
sense of, of illumination and greater understanding about um, these advanced concepts that we are talking about. <clears throat> uh, one of the things is that uh, the, uh, the message of the Venusian seems to be um, seeping into the public consciousness slowly but surely. Sci-fi movies uh, often serve as a warning for things that, that could come. Uh, of course, you know, we've seen movies um, also mm -hmm. about, uh, about pandemics and so forth, like Outbreak and, you know, with that movie with Dustin Hoffman and, and so forth. And um, we've been getting warnings like this for a long time. Even in the Bible, it talks about the pale horse uh, bringing disease, pestilence, and pandemics, the, right. red, or the red horse for war, rumors of war and conflicts between, uh, between nations and so forth. So the people who write these science fiction movies, a lot of times um, they are in tune uh, with these forces, these cosmic forces, and perhaps alternate realities that are projections of the future, right. so that they they can warn us of uh, of um, of things to come. Well, yeah, and I just want to say really quickly that a lot of the we're dealing with uh, uh, people who don't want us to know the real deal, but they. There is uh, something that they have to put out what's really happening right in front of us. And so, uh, and you know what I'm talking about here, Raymond, where they have yeah. to be honest and say, you know, the way the energy works, the way the universe works. So a lot of this stuff that we think is fake is real. Oh, oh yes. And I mean, this isn't just a modern day phenomena. When we go back a hundred years uh, or, or more, we see, uh, uh, books that were allegedly written as fiction, like Jules Verne's Journey to the Moon. Right. Our first men in the moon. It predicted that the first rocket to the moon would come from Florida. Uh, it predicted its weight within 200 pounds of the projectile, within 200 pounds of the, uh, the actual weight of the uh, Apollo 11. Wow. That's, you know, that's the weight of one astronaut. So this is pretty... And then the Gulliver's, in Gull Jonathan Swift and Gulliver's Travels, uh, you know, it predicts the um, that Mars would have two two small moons. I mean, how how do they know the that was in, you know, that was a couple hundred years ago. How did he know these things? Right, he had to have pulled that so, information in. Sure. Right, I think that they were they were tuned into some kind of channel. Right. Or to give us a, uh, a heads up about what's coming down the pike. <clears throat> so we have a warning from Venus not to tamper with the forces of nature. Mm -hmm. uh, we have the harp up in Alaska that's weather, weather modification. So we look at all these changes in the weather. Is it really because uh, the, the cars are churning out carbon dioxide or is it something more something more sinister because i mean carbon dioxide is used by plants and converts it into oxygen so right and that's why there's green grass gr growing along the uh, side of the highway <laughs> right exactly <laughs> you know so i don't know what it is you know but we're messing around with powers that are beyond control once they're they're unleashed that's why i have this cartoon here you know, talking about turning on the CERN collider and and the God particle and tampering with the uh, subatomic universe, the, the construction of the subatomic universe. So in the bottom of that cartoon frame, you see the sun, then uh, Mercury, Venus, uh, uh, and a little poof where the oh, Earth gone. is. Like the little white dot that goes when you turn off the TV, <laughs> you know, as, as soon as they switch on the CERN, poof. So well, the, this, is, this is why the extraterrestrials are so concerned because yeah, this, we're messing around with kind of powers that upset the very balance of the solar system. Of the solar system, and we don't have it. And, and I just want to. 
and say really quickly, I want to make sure that everybody understands this, that they are controlling our weather and there is no global warming, correct? I, I don't think so, because uh, uh, per se, because, well, Dr. Frank Stranges said um, uh, 50 years ago in 1972, he said that 50 years from 1972, um, there would be an increase in temperature on all the planets because there's um, there's a, a a cloud of hydro a radioactive cloud of hydrogen that was ignited to a temperature of 10,000 degrees uh, Fahrenheit that entered into our solar system and went around a, a highly elliptical orbit around the sun, but now it's in the vicinity of the inner planets. And um, it's heating up. Um, it's heating up all the inner planets. So the temperature on uh, on the planets um, closest to the sun from the asteroid belt uh, would be Mars, uh, the Earth, Venus, and and Mercury. They're all heating up. So it's it's. Um, it's just that's what happened. Hey, listen, we got to go to commercial break. We're doing the podcast today. Uh, we're going to be back here in a minute on our last segment with Raymond Keller. This is Nancy Earle. This is High Road to Humanity, and we'll be right back. Back here with Raymond Keller. We're having a fabulous conversation, you guys, about what's going on in the universe. Raymond, I'm always curious about the moon. Some people, there has been an astronaut that's come forward that says it was all smoke and mirrors and it was all recorded. They never went to the moon. I have people say you can't go on the dark side of the moon because there's ETs over there. What's really going on with the moon? I've heard people say it's not really a planet. It's 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 a ship. So what do you know? Okay, what I can tell you uh, and what I wrote in uh, my fourth book um, um, called The Vast Venus Conspiracy okay. is that... Um, uh, in 1966, three years before the Apollo 11 moon landing, a team of scientists was assembled at Corrales at the observatory in Corrales, New Mexico, for the for the purpose of finding a suitable moon landing. Site. Where I live. Oh, you live in Corrales, New Mexico. I'm pretty close. It's just down the road. Wow. Yes. <laughs> Talk about synchronicities. <laughs> No wonder you want to know about the moon. It is right here. In, are you Corrales, New Mexico? Yeah, this is the whole locus. Okay, the, so I'm in the North of, Valley. So I'm like, the, a, I could throw a rock and hit Corrales. Oh, this is the whole locus of the uh, of the secret moon program. Oh. Well, um, what happened was that uh, Dr. J. Allen Hynek, who is a technical consultant to Project Blue Book, uh, was called in to supervise the, the moon landing project because in the Aristarchus crater on the far side of the moon, which is just north of the Sea of Tranquility, they were observing uh, large red flashes, uh, flashes of light like a strobe light and detecting unusual uh, emanations of radiation. And um, okay. they decided that... Uh, they needed to check this out. And so, so they decided on the Sea of Tranquility because they would have a good observation of, the, um, of these lights that were emanating from the rim of the Aristarchus Crater, okay. you know, from the floor of the Sea of Tran Tranquility. Okay. So when the, when the astronauts went there, it's interesting because the European uh, in, in Europe, they were able to hear a conversation about uh, seeing large objects and flashes and so forth and, uh, and, and various phenomena, but it was blocked out with the transmissions and the coverage in the United States and radio operators were able to hear uh, conversations about, about bogeys on the moon and we're not alone up there uh, and so forth. And uh, uh, we were we were uh, allowed to um, all the astronauts, in fact, Russian and American who had ever gone uh, into space, have noted uh, the presence of uh, of UFOs out there. Okay. And uh, 
But uh, uh, the thing about the moon is George Adamski and other contactees uh, that had, you know, flown by the moon or been to the moon, they said that there is a there's a slight atmosphere on the moon. And it's very intense in the valleys. And there are dome cities and structures on the far side of the moon. There's a moon base Clarion, which I write all about in the Lady Columba book. Who and lives the, there? Who lives there? Um, this is uh, the, the uh, Intergalactic Confederation of Light, and they own that, that they own that base. Uh, so there are uh, representatives of 601 planets from 51 solar systems that share <laughs> that base on the on the far side of the moon. Of but course. Let me say this about the moon. If uh, you know, and so uh, you know, Adamski and these other contactees said, "Well, yeah, the moon has a uh, the, the the moon does have a, an atmosphere, and there are even lakes and so forth on the moon." And everybody laughed and said, no, that's not possible. But you know what? When the astronauts were on the moon and they reported, uh, you know, comets entering the vicinity of the moon and seeing them streak across the sky, you know, they were burning up because in uh, they were burning up as they approached the moon because there's an atmosphere up there, okay. you know, and, and they wouldn't burn up with friction if there wasn't an atmosphere. Atmosphere. They would just plop on the moon, and that and that would be make a make a small crater, and that. So would it's be a planet. It is a planet. Um, oh, well, they call the Earth and the Moon system a twin planet, a twin planet, uh, because of uh, you know the Moon is uh, proportionately larger than the other moons are to their to their respective uh, planet that they orbit around. That the Moon is very large. Uh, for the for the size of the um, for the size of the Earth, it's almost one sixth the size of the Earth. Does it have the gravitational pull that we've been told with the ocean? Oh, 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 yes, and it creates the the tides and okay. And, so forth. and then another thing about the lakes, you know, everybody laughed at Adamski and Howard Menger and these other contactees said they were crazy. There, there's no lakes on the moon. But guess why the Artemis space, uh, when we're going back to the moon, why the Artemis is going there is because the south polar region of the moon is peppered with lakes. There's water on there. And in order to go to Mars, we need a base uh, to, to refuel and that could be- Oh. And there are lakes, there are lakes some the size of Puerto Rico <laughs> that, are, that are on the south pole of the moon. So everything that Adamski said is is true. He said that space is dark and that there's uh, that there's um, these fireflies that can be seen, like a firefly effect that's uh, surrounding this the spaceships. And when John Glenn and the early astronauts went up there, the Freedom yeah. Seven and everything, that's yeah. exactly how they they described it. So. Um, um, yeah, these contactees from the 50s and 60s, they're all being vindicated now because, uh, and then even with Venus, uh, the discover, discovery of life-sustaining phosphine molecules in the atmosphere of Venus, uh, various gravitational phenomena and, uh, and uh, other phenomena on Venus that uh, the, the, uh, what supposedly when Venus is on its dark side there's all these lights that are emanating from the from the surface and um the whole backside is all lit up with um uh, with lights uh like there's cities and so forth there so this is a you know nasa i just call nasa nasa never a straight answer right because, well and i saw that something was supposed to go up just recently and then it was canceled did you see that Oh, oh yes, it was uh, supposedly. That? Well, it was supposedly canceled for a uh, a fuel leak. Yeah. Or, uh, but uh, but I believe that uh, you know we were warned we could go into space, but there's certain areas that we we won't be able we won't be allowed to go to. And uh, for example, when the Russian probe was sent. Uh, 
and to uh, look at the the Martian moon of Phobos. Mm -hmm. um, then it was uh, it it took a picture of what looked like a uh, uh, a, um, a large space platform or a mothership, and then all of a sudden, uh, the the uh, the, pr the probe was destroyed. It it was just like it was there was disintegrated. Uh, yeah, there was like a flash of light, and the thing disintegrated. And half the probes that have gone to Mars have been uh, have have been destroyed so all right now let me stop you and ask you because we don't have a ton of time left but is the reason we're not supposed to go beyond a certain point because of our evolution because of how we think right well, right right they don't they don't want us to bring our aggressions and our um uh our destructive uh, philosophies and way of life to contaminate other planets and Mental contamination is just as bad as, if not worse, than than physical contamination. Because of the energy, right? It's, we, they don't, we don't need to bring any negative energies into space. When we go there in brotherhood, sisterhood, love, kindness, and friendship, right. then uh, we'll be welcome everywhere. I'm sure. Mm -hmm. So we got like two minutes left here. What do you want to <laughs> leave us with today? Gosh, Raymond. Oh, okay. Um, well, I just want to say that um, um, Helena Blavatsky had said that um, um, that outer space is filled with infinite intelligence. That every every um, every aspect of the universe, every area of the universe is filled with uh, intelligences. Mm -hmm. And um, we're all divine sparks of the infinite creator. And uh, we just have to find our place in this bigger scheme before we, uh, before we move on. And that, that's why our brothers and sisters of other planets are here uh, uh, to help us find our way. Yeah. And thank you for writing all these books and coming on today to give us all this information. I hope you'll come back again and see us and, and give us more information as time goes on. Thank you, dear Nancy. I appreciate the opportunity of being on the program. And I'm so glad that the audience uh, area is expanded so greatly. I know. The, I'm this is, this is really, it. this is really good news. I'm glad to be, to be among the first to be part of it. I know we're on Vince TV. We're getting out there to the world. We're letting people know what's really going on. And it's a blessing. And thank you for coming on and sharing your information with the audience. Thank you so much. And if those in the audience would like to know more about Venus, Venusians, and the mysteries of the planet Venus, please uh, check out uh, uh, Amazon.com. Just type in Keller Venus in the search bar on the Amazon. It'll take you to all my uh, all my books. And th th thank you so much. You're welcome. All right, you guys, we got to get out of here for today. If you want a psychic reading, if you want an angel <laughs> reading, go to nancyyearhalt.com and you can book your date and time with me. Hey, we got to get out of here, but thanks for watching. This is High Road to Humanity. Everybody take care and God bless. <laughs> God bless. God bless. Please join me next time on The High Road with stories full of love and hope for our future. You can find High Road to Humanity on TogiNet Radio, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and now watch The High Road on Binge TV Networks. My channel is High Road to Humanity. Have a blessed week and know by staying on The High Road, you will make it to your destination. For a psychic empath reading, visit my website, nancyyourout.com, to book your date and time with me. I will deliver your messages from the angels. And God bless.